Alright guys, so now that we know how to take 2x2 and 3x3 determinants, let's take a look at larger ones and how to attack those. So over here, the question is asking us to evaluate the following 4x4 determinant. And it turns out to, to do these types of problems, to evaluate these, there are dozens of different techniques that you can apply. The most common one being um, expanding this over either any row or any column. In this instance, uh, one way of doing it is simply going to be to expand this over this first column. Now, this is not a very intelligent way of doing this. If you've done this method before, you want to take any row or column that at least contains the maximum number of zeros. This being said though, it turns out that um, we're going to learn yet a diff another way of solving this type of a problem. In my experience, um, I feel that we are already very strong at row reduction and we're going to try to combine row reduction or use row reduction in order to, to, to calculate determinants. But before we get there, we need to know the effects that row operations have on the determinant. If we can understand these, then we can use these hopefully to our advantage to solve a problem of the type that we have. So it turns out that there are only three row operations. The first one in our case is switching rows. It turns out that switching rows, the effect of switching rows on the determinant is that it changes the sign of the determinant. So if I have a matrix and its determinant is 10, I manipulate the matrix by switching any two rows, the determinant is going to become negative 10. The next one is the most interesting one to us. It turns out that adding a multiple of one row to the other, usually done to create a zero somewhere, actually has absolutely no effect on the determinant. And this is what we're going to use to our advantage. We're going to exploit this property. Lastly, if it turns out that you either multiply or divide um, a row by a scalar, well, then you have to multiply or divide the determinant by the same scalar. So if you have a matrix and you have manipulated the matrix by multiplying by two, it turns out that the original determinant will also get multiplied by two. So at the end, you'll have to divide by two to get the correct answer. This being said, let's go back to the question at hand and see what we're going to do here. So the way we are going to tackle this problem is we're going to locate a one somewhere in our determinant. Now, if you take a look at the exams on the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years, you'll notice that almost every single time there is a one present somewhere. Now, if there isn't, you create a one by dividing a number by its own value. So choose a one anywhere over here and use it to create zeros above and below. Now, understand that this one does not have to be at the right location. It does not have to be a pivot one. I could have taken this one had it been positive, for instance. We are going to take this one and we're going to use it to create zeros above and below. The reason I picked this one is because I have two gifts right here. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply my second row by negative four and add that to the first row. Performing this row operation, adding a multiple of one row to another, remember, does not change our determinant. So our answer will not change if we perform this operation. So let's do it. So our new determinant, guys, is going to become 1, 0, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, plus 2 is negative 14. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, plus 3 is negative 13. And all the other rows are going to remain intact, guys. And so this is what we're left with. Now the next thing we're going to do is since we have a, a column with all zeros, we're going to actually take a look at the one that we have in that column and pretend that that row and that column never really existed. We're going to eliminate those rows and columns. If we eliminate those, we're left with a three by three determinant. The remaining values create the following three by three determinants. And that we already know how to solve. 
to refresh our memories, remember how to take a 3 by 3 determinant. What you're going to do is you're going to copy or recopy the first two columns right over here. Once that is done, once these two columns have been recopied, you will multiply every single diagonal that contains three entries. Let's take a look at how that can be done. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to multiply every diagonal that has at least three entries in it. And those are these. There are six of them. Just multiply those numbers out. It's not very difficult. Multiplying these numbers out gives us negative 26. This diagonal contains a zero, so that's just going to be zero. And lastly, I'll get a 14 out of here. If I add all of these values up, I'm going to get negative 12. And now I'm going to repeat this process on this side. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0, plus 13 times, 13 times 1 times 4 is going to be positive 52, for a grand total of 53. This being said, remember what our final answer is going to be. It is the right side minus the left side. So the determinant of our given matrix is going to be 53, the right side, minus the left side, or 65. This being said, we're almost there. There is one last thing that we need to check before we circle this as being our final answer. It turns out that if you use this technique, your answer is either going to be 65 or negative 65, and you have to figure out which one it is. To do that, you're going to go right back up here and ask yourself if there were a checkerboard of signs on top of this determinant, would the one fall on top of a positive or negative value? What I'm trying to say over here is that let's pretend that we have this checkerboard of signs. Plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. Now, if we were to take this checkerboard of signs, let's just group them really quickly, and just superimpose them right here. Ask yourself, let's just make sure it fits. Ask yourself whether your one falls on a positive or a negative value. You will notice that it falls on a positive value, which means you can circle your answer and it is correct. Had it fallen on a negative value, that simply means that you would have to change the sign of your answer. If it is positive, it becomes negative and vice versa. Hopefully, that is clear. Let's move on to the next problem.